Hi everyone, my name is Avery Anderson. We are here in the beautiful James Museum for Western Art in downtown St. Pete for the Lift Every Voice New Play Festival put on by American Stage. We are here with Miguel Munoz, one of our playwrights who wrote Latino. Miguel, how are you? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm great. So let's just briefly start. Will you give me like a quick synopsis of Latino? Yeah, so uh, Latino is a dark comedy satire about a uh, kid sort of having to find and like rediscover his Latin roots through this just crazy, crazy path that brings him along with his character called Macho the Mexican. So it's it's pretty wild and ridiculous, and it's really fun. Yeah, I I love it, and I I would just love to know where did it come from, right? What was the inspiration? Was there like a moment, or was it just like so many things compounded together that made you write this play? How did it come to be? For me, I think it was like a lot of different things culminating together. So I'm I'm a teacher, edu I'm a theater education major, so I have that connection to sort of um, students, ELL students, and then I was an ELL student for a bit. So thinking back to that experience and sort of me having to find my own um, path in that, and and I also went to a like a, a very majority white high school, so that kind of played into the setting of the show. And then with the comedy, with sort of the satirical, the characters in it, I just decided I wanted to make it fun and I wanted to make it fun and like palatable to people like me. I feel like Latin culture and Latino people, like we can laugh at ourselves and we can laugh at, at the situation about it. So I think that's sort of where the comedy came and that's, that, that's what mixed together to create the show. I love that. So are you currently teaching? Like, are you, well, I mean, not in this exact moment, but right. Do you have, is teaching your day job? Yeah. So I haven't graduated from uh, undergrad yet. So I'm in my third year. I'll be finishing uh, up next, next uh, spring. So after that, I, I might be going straight into public school teaching, but I also might be pursuing my playwriting MFA before I do that. So you are still in school yeah. and you already have a play in a national play festival. So thanks for making me feel like I have more work to do in life. What does that feel like, though? What is that like? Do you gloat to your friends? Uh, well, I, I, tr I try not to. I, it, it's like I, it didn't really hit me a lot like of how, how lucky I am to be here until today, I think, or until this, this week, because you're just working privately with, like, you know, with, with people. And, and American Stage does a really good job of not making you feel like a fish out of water. I mean, like, everybody's really welcoming. But then today, it was just like, you were, or this weekend, I'm meeting people, and it's like, whoa, you run this, and you run that. And be, uh, also, like, being the youngest one here, like, I, I don't know, I feel really lucky to be here and be able to meet people and like I feel like I've learned a lot from people so I'm, I'm very grateful for that I don't know if that answered the question but yeah. sure of course <laughs> how did you get here did someone say like oh you should submit for this or what was the process to getting to this moment yeah so uh, luckily enough I had connections with the new producing artistic director um, Helen Murray and uh, she had seen the university production of the play that we did the year before so when the play festival came around uh, she submitted my work she asked if she could submit the work for me uh, I said, yeah, and then from there, discussions were had, and I was informed that, you know, I got into that final round. So I might have gotten a little a little extra boost by her being able to see it be performed on a stage, which was really helpful. I think the show, like, calls for that energy. I think it, it can really jump off the, the page well. So that, yeah, that's kind of how I got here. I love it. What's that feel like to know that, right, like, a producing artistic director at a regional theater is like, hey, we want to work with you. Like, what is that feeling like? Yeah, oh, I feel really lucky, and I, I tend to think a lot about my family and sort of where I've come from, and I, uh, I, I feel lucky that it's happening so early right now, and that I'm forming these connections that are going to last me a life. Um, but I, I feel very blessed, and I, I just can't think, I can't help but think of the people who came before me, who laid, you know, my, my siblings, my parents, my all my teachers, and I, I just feel very grateful for them. Yeah. I love it. And you said this play is kind of based. Uh, based, but influenced by your life in some ways. Yeah. Why Why did you feel like you needed to tell this story? Like, what was it that you were like, you know, I think others will relate to this. What What was about it that made you want to share it? Yeah, I think I didn't have sort of um, the guidance in those moments to deal with the internal struggle. I don't think I even really talked about it when I went through it. And obviously it's not in the exaggerated satirical way that the play does it, but I think that if I had said something, if I had had something like that a little bit, um, I think it, it could have it could have really helped guide me and, and honestly spared me a lot of like personal pain and struggle. And I kept thinking about how that could help people who were even even more extreme positions than I am, who weren't in ELL programs for a couple years, but who are still in it right now and into their older ages. Um, and then also just higher education experience. I was also I went to a school that's that at least in the theater department is all a very majority white too. So like experiencing that culture shock and what I can do to guide those people and how I can make them laugh about it too, so yeah. 
I love it. And why do you think, like you said, this story is for, it would have helped you when you were young. Why do you think it's so important to be telling these stories now in this moment as we're kind of going through this national shift of starting, you know, after a pandemic, new plays are coming back up more. So why do you think it's so important to be telling this story now? Yeah, I think that the really cool thing about sort of the 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 change that happened after the pandemic was that I think people are starting to become more aware of other people's stories and, and a lot of stories that were just silenced and were not told before and were kind of erased are, are starting to come out. And I think in this wave of that, I think this story is a really important one because it speaks to um, the pride that I think we have, that we should have in ourselves and in our own identity and sort of stifle away. And I think after pandemic, we sort of got these big change movements. It was like reform this system and reform that and reform. But a big theme of the play is that um, a lot of the people who go through the struggle are just kids. They're, they're high school, elementary, middle school students. And honestly, they can't do that change. It's unrealistic to expect that of them. But what they can do is be you know, satisfied and happy in their own identity, whether it is Latino, whether it is sexual orientation, gender identity, whether it is uh, race or things like that, socioeconomic status. I think being comfortable and proud of who you are in the midst of a world that maybe wants you to assimilate and won't accept you, and a world that you can't change at your young age, I think that that's an important story to tell right now. I love that. So we're at the festival. You have two readings. We've already done one. We have one more coming up. And I got to say, some people have said the play's a little long. Yeah. So talk to me about what are you doing with that feedback you're getting, right? Some people are like, oh, it might be long, which like three hours is not that long. Yeah. I mean, how long do we sit through Long Day's Journey and Tonight, right? Yeah. But like, tell me about that experience of just hearing feedback, yeah. uh, both positive and negative, and what does that do for your artistic process? Yeah, so when we got the, when we submitted the play, it was, it was a longer play. It was, it's written in a three-act structure, so naturally it, it tended to be a little bit longer. Um, and when we produced it last year, it was also it ran three three hours with, with the production that Helen saw. But it's been the week of process that we had here at New Play Development that actually really formed it. So that yesterday our reading was down at two hours and seven minutes, oh, wow. um, with three acts with an intermission. Um, and I felt like I made these cuts in the week, and I don't feel like the story was compromised at all. I had to kill my darlings. I had to kill jokes that I really, really liked. I had to kill little bits. But it was refining the story, like what needs to be told right now? Why is, have I already made my point? Has this, does this point need to be made in this play, or does it need to be done earlier, later? Um, so that's helped me bring the length down, and then seeing an audience, which was a very different audience that has experienced this play before. Mm -hmm. Before that, um, it had been young college students, a, a lot of people of color, or a very diverse population took this in, and then uh, the audience here that we saw it with was, uh, I think, uh, of an older age and, and a bit uh, wider than it was, and it, it brought some fear out of me in that moment, but then seeing it still translate, the comedy, them sort of being willing to lean into the ridiculous, into the vulgarity of the world. Um, and then also not, for them also to tell me that it was starting, it, it just sped by, and it didn't feel, it kind of reinforced the cuts that we made, but it also reinforced the pace of the play. So. Uh, I was able to change certain things and also reinforce certain parts of the writing uh, during this week. Yeah. I love that. I love a, I mean, I hate a cut joke, but it's a perfect thing to save in your pocket at the bar, right? You have jokes ready <laughs> to go. All right, my last question for you. Yeah. We are obviously standing in a museum. Uh -huh. Uh, and it's not very, you know, common for new play festivals to happen in a museum. Uh -huh. So what has that experience been like to you, um, especially thinking that this is the James Museum of Western Art, which I think uh, colonial America has such a complex relationship with mm -hmm. art in the West, especially when it comes to uh, Latin people. So what is that like to have this setting be the place where you're developing this play? Yeah, I think when you came into the space, it, it, it felt very different than when we were working in the, uh, in the American stage. It kind of felt like, I don't know, you do feel that, that, that shift in the location. And I actually, I feel very privileged to be doing it here because as I look around the artwork, I think the artwork honors a lot of, you know, uh, indigenous populations and things like that. And, it, and what I've realized as I walk through is it's sort of uplifting these voices or this art that we haven't seen before. So it almost matches up mm -hmm. to what we're doing with the, with the play. It doesn't almost, it does match up. And then it also is the power of like seeing whether or not they're my ancestors. It's the people who were on this land before that we are now putting this play on and it's a special connection to realize where the roots are of what you're doing and and I'm doing you know we're putting this play on the, on the, on the lands of, of tribes that that have you know that were eradicated and wiped out and I think feeling their presence here is a is a is you know I'm just we're just very lucky to feel this and very blessed to be doing it over there. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you for sharing your art with us. And I'm so excited to see where Latino goes next. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys.